Okay, so let's go into some of the specifics of our matched pairs testing. So matched pairs testing is specifically a test where we are testing for means. So first thing, let's put that up. So matched pairs is for means. All right, there's some requirements when we do match pairs testing. So when we do our match pairs testing, here are requirements. So first of all, N1 must equal N2. The two sample sizes of our two samples must be the same size. If they are not the same size, we cannot have matched pairs testing. So that's the first thing to check for. But just because they're the same size does not mean that they are matched pairs. Plenty of times we have equal sample sizes and we wind up doing like a, our two independent um, like t-tests for the mean. So this is just kind of step one. It's a quick check because if they're not equal, you know you've got to move on to something else. But if they are the same, then we want to check something else. Uh, so we need to see that there is some one-to-one -one link between uh, between the two samples. Okay, so there must be something linking these two samples together. So let me give you a couple of examples of what is matched pairs and what would be just independent. So let's put this up here just in a little table. So we'll do matched pairs and we'll do independent. All right, so matched pairs, we've got twin studies. So if we have a twin study, what this would be matched pairs, because we'd put one twin in one group and one twin in another group. And then we'd give them, like, maybe we're doing some painkiller. We're trying to, we have a new painkiller and we're trying to compare its, uh, its effectiveness against Tylenol. Okay, so we want to see this Tylenol, uh, it, can we show that, that this new painkiller is any better than Tylenol. Well, if we use a twin study, this is really good because we can compare basically what each treatment would ha would affect each, um, the, like the same person. Because twins are awesome for testing because they have the same DNA. So like from a biological standpoint, we can basically say that, hey, this painkiller would have reacted the same in either twin because they have the same DNA. So twin studies are a great way that we could do a matched pairs. There'd be this one-to-one -one link between the two samples. Okay, another example. Let's say that I'm some pharmaceutical company and I'm trying to develop some new sunscreen. And I want to see how, um, how well it protects your skin versus, like when you're out on the beach versus if you had no sunscreen on. Okay, that seems like a fair thing. Well, so if you compared how, how my skin reacted to having the sunscreen on versus somebody else who didn't wear the sunscreen, there's a lot of variability that happens between those two things. And we could make it a matched pairs. What we do is like put sunscreen on half of my arm and then compare how much damage from the UV rays that I'd get on the side that had sunscreen versus the side that did not have sunscreen. And then there would be one-to-one -one link between the two samples. It would be my arm. My arm would be the, the link between those two samples and we could look at the difference in the damage between the side with the sunscreen versus the side without sunscreen. So we put that up like um, two sides, two sides of arm, sunscreen. Okay, what would not be a twin study is like if we just a random group, random group split in two. Okay, so this would, I mean, we do lots of studies this way. We randomly select a big group of people and then we randomly assign them uh, to their treatments. And what we're trying to do there is to get the groups to be as a whole similar to one another and then provide them their, their treatments. Uh, but that would, there's no like one-to-one -one link between these groups. So for matched pairs, it has to be in, uh, we've got to have this one-to-one -one, and then we still have to have this link between the samples. Okay, when we do this too, we still need to make sure that our sample sizes are large enough or the original population is normally distributed. So we still have to satisfy the demands of our central limit theorem. But this time, instead of just checking one sample size, we have to check 
two sample sizes. We have to check both sample one and sample two. Now in match pairs, the sample sizes are the same. So as long as one of them is over you know, 30, they're both going to be over 30. And then we can continue on with our matched. Oh dear, I cannot spell matched. Matched pairs. And uh, I'll go into like the details of how we can actually do the calculations. Um, but kind of in a nutshell, let's take this twin study. So we'll do twins and this would be considered our first set. This would be considered our second set and this would be our third set. And let's do UV damage. So we'll do with sunscreen and we'll do without sunscreen. So maybe with sunscreen damage, this twin got three, this one got four. This one got two, and then without sunscreen, um, we could do something like that would be six, this would be seven, and this would be three. Okay, so the cool thing about match pairs is we can actually think about match pairs as this like hybrid and think about it really as a one sample test. I'll go into the nuts and bolts of how we can see how both of these will produce the same result, but we could see, hey, we've got the first twin, so this would be like twin A, and this would be twin B. Twin A got the sunscreen, twin A didn't get the sunscreen. And then we would compare how much damage their skin each got. Okay, and those are looks like two samples, but we could just look at the differences. And say three minus six is negative three, four minus seven is negative three, and two minus three is negative one. And so we could consider this as a really a one sample test when we just look at the differences. And I'll go, like I said, I'll go into that in our software videos and show how those two calculations could actually provide us the same results. How we can consider match pairs testing either as a two sample dependent test or just a one sample um, test of the means. And so we'll go through that and hopefully this kind of gives us a framework to work off of.